Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube. If you are new here, my name is Sarah. I am the owner of Denim and Rain. I am an artist and maker of little knitting notions. And then of course here on YouTube, I share my knitting, my art, and whatever else I feel like talking about. I have a projects video for you today and there is a lot, like so much here, like a giant pile of all the things. But before I start sharing all of the knitting and crochet goodness, I do want to start with some admin type things because it's been a while. I don't typically start off videos with like all the different like admin type stuff, but I do have a few things I wanted to talk to you about. First thing is restocks. <laughs> I have had a few comments and emails from people saying, hey, I follow you on YouTube. I went to your website. I'm not seeing any of your stitch markers. Well, that's because I do collections ready to ship. I don't like pre-orders. They stress me out too much. And honestly, life is unpredictable and I don't like to put myself in those types of situations. So I do made to like ready to ship collections. So it's pretty limited and usually I put out a collection maybe once every other month ish somewhere in there. So I tend to be really bad about sharing on here just because usually it's past it or whatever and people don't always watch right when I put a video live. I do have some news about a new one that will be coming up but I will share that later on in the video. Uh, but if you are ever interested in purchasing any of my stitch markers, I would highly recommend you subscribe to my newsletter. If you go to my website, after a few seconds of being on my website, there'll be a pop-up. Or if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, there's a newsletter sign up. And I don't send a lot of emails. The only emails I tend to send are either coming up to a restock or the day of. Sometimes there's discount codes and other things. Every now and then I'll do a freebie. Usually I have like one annual freebie I send out. So yeah, I highly recommend that. Also, I do share on my Instagram. So I have a link to that as well down below. You can see updates as to what I'm making. I share a lot of like ahead of time, like in my stories and stuff. And then I don't share as much on my feed, my products, but they do pop up there before a collection goes live. Also, YouTube is weird. I don't understand it, but whatever. There are new videos I've put out recently that doesn't seem like a whole lot of people see. That's okay. You may not be into it, but there are past videos that I have put, put out. So go to the little videos tab in my YouTube and you can see all the videos that you may have missed. Also, if you were into my vlogs, my lifestyle vlogs, I no longer publish those publicly. They are now unlisted. So if you are interested in watching those, I have those in my community tab. So if you go to my channel, there's the community thing. If you go there, there's a post that says lifestyle vlog. And in the comments, there is a link to that. So you can watch that way. The reason I've done that is one, it, I kind of want this space to be just about my hobbies and that sort of thing. And two, just trying to pull my family life just kind of off the larger scope of the internet. Like, I know it's still out there, but like it's a little less like searchable and anybody can watch it type thing. Like obviously anybody can click that link, I'm aware, but it, you have to kind of know about it if you know what I mean. So if you're interested in the lifestyle vlogs, you can head over to the community page and find that link over there. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So let's get into all of this amazing yarny goodness. I probably sound a little congested and part of that I think is a little bit of allergies, but also we have a never ending cold. <sighs> Life stuff at the end, but that's maybe a thing. So if that like annoys you, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I currently am having a bit of a love-hate relationship with knitting. Maybe hate's a strong word. Hate is kind of a strong word. I'd say love slash disinterested relationship with knitting. It's gone in waves like crazy. So let's show you the things I've finished. I will start with this one. 
I'm not going to talk about it a ton because I have an entire video for this. It is my Lauder sweater, which was a test knit for Rebecca Klo of the Crea Bea. It is an all over color work sweater. I knit the third size out of um, Premier Wool Select. And yeah, it is absolutely amazing. Look at the folded neckline and all oh, these cables are just absolutely beautiful. They are literally all over, which is amazing. The size, I think I said was size three. I did make a couple of modifications. The first modification I made was I went up a size. Normally I would probably knit size two, but I wanted it to be more oversized and have more like 10 inches of positive ease versus the five inches that the pattern recommends. I did the size three. I did knit a size five for the sleeves because I lengthened the depth of my yoke. And then I went up a needle size, two needle sizes. I knit the body on a four and a half millimeter and the sleeves on a five millimeter. And then my ribbing, I knit on 3.75 millimeter needles. I did struggle to get gauge, which uh, I know Rebecca Klo is a loose knitter and I am a very tight knitter. So we're at opposite ends of the spectrum. So I usually have to go up quite a bit and my gauge is still a bit off. I'm about half of a stitch off which makes a difference, I know. Um, so, but it was okay because I was knitting a size up anyways. But if I had gotten exact gauge, I probably would have gotten a little bit more space, but I, I'm fine with it and how it is. But I didn't want to go up another needle size because I really liked the fabric that I was getting and didn't want a looser gauge. I did say I knit the sleeves at a size five millimeter and that's because I was knitting in a tight circumference and I tend to knit even tighter in sleeves. So I went up that way, my gauge was the same and it ended up being even and um, perfect. Uh, if you want more information, you can go watch the other video. I'm not gonna go into super like great detail here because I did an entire video on this sweater. But yeah, I'm very happy with it. I love it. Oh, the other modification I made was I lengthened it. I made it quite a bit longer. And then I also did some short, <laughs> I also added some short rows in the ribbing in the back to lengthen it a little bit. Very, very pleased with the Lauder sweater. I've already worn it several times. It's already getting lots of wear. So I feel like in fall, it's gonna get even more. Maybe even in the summer, in the evenings, when it cools down a bit, I feel like this might be one that I end up grabbing for. Okay, I have a fun little pile of things here. I made some dishcloths. They're kind of one of my comfort knits. I, when I'm not feeling good or I'm just feeling a little low, I crave crocheting and I crave dishcloths. So I've got, I've got some crochet to show you. And then dishcloths. This is just the grandma's or granny's favorite dishcloth pattern. It's a corner to corner garter stitch with a little eyelet on the edge. It's not the cleanest edge in the world. I did, I do tend to knit them at a, at a looser gauge, larger needles, because this like dishcloth cotton tends to shrink a bit and I kind of like it to be a little holier. So there's lots of like places for the soap to lather up and stuff. So yeah, I've got two dishcloths. This one I made for me, this white one, I'm going to start making a gift basket of like things that I can future gift. So I've got this one and then this sponge that I made that has that like really awful scrubby yarn and then just a cotton on the back. It's awful, I hate knitting with it, but it is really nice to wash dishes with. So I've got these two things that will go in a basket for future gifting. I just figured when I have time here and there, I will make gift knits. So dishcloth for me, dishcloth for the gift bin, sponge for the gift bin, and then I made myself a pot holder. I really like uh, my double knit pot holder that I made a while ago, and I decided to make another one. This cotton fabric, this cotton yarn I used, I don't know, I've, all of these cottons are just random dish cottons. 
but I don't, it's a little bit more drapey than the other cotton. And this went through the washer and dryer already. So it's a little, not quite as easy to grip. It wants to kind of slip out of my hands. So I want to make another one with a more like rustic cotton, but I do really like it. I think it'll be a nice trivet to like set on the counter, but I made basically a gigantic square and then folded the corners in the back and sewed them together to make this nice double thick garter stitch square. I didn't follow a pattern, just kind of made it up as I went along. I'm gonna kind of cruise through all this because there's a lot. <laughs> if I miss anything and you have any questions, don't hesitate to put it in the comments. I have a tendency to either respond right away or take weeks to respond, so just keep your eye out for any responses. Okay, the next thing I finished, I'm so excited about. Ta da I finished my 90s socks and I am so in love with them. So this is not following any pattern, it's just a 72 stitch vanilla sock. I did do two by two ribbing at the top with some stripes in the cuff, which I thought was really fun and like just added to that like 90s vibe with like the primary colors and stuff. So we've got that and then this yellow, I don't know, I think this one came from Autumn and Indigo quite a while ago. I'm pretty sure they're not dying anymore. This blue is one that I dyed. This is from the Kinetic Knitter and I just I love this colorway. It made me so happy knitting it. And then the toe, I did the blue with just the last round and the Kitchener stitch done in the yellow. These things fit beautifully. And oh my goodness, they're also like, they're really tall. I wanted them tall, which is great, but I'm surprised at how much yarn I actually have left over. I'm pretty sure I have close, don't quote me on this, I actually need to weigh it. I'll put it here on screen if I remember. Um, but I'm pretty sure I have close to like 20 grams, maybe like 15 grams of this yarn left. And that's on a 72 stitch count. I did the heels in the main color and I made the legs really long. So feeling pretty good about my yarn management. I feel like I could have gotten even longer leg and I would have been very happy with that. So yeah, in love, 10 out of 10, amazing socks. They fit gorgeously. Uh, so last year I knit like no socks and this year apparently I'm just in the sock knitting mood because I have another pair of socks finished. Granted they are shorties, but you know, it's fine. I had this colorway, this crazy stripey colorway from Hobie. I, it's called Happy Feet or Happy Toes. It is such a fun stripey color. I got this yarn for free. It was, sign up for like the rewards program. You get like rewards when you purchase a certain amount. Well, I had enough rewards points to pick out an item. And this yarn was one of those items. So I was like, um, I will get some free yarn, please and thank you. I did reverse the stripe. So with the first sock, I pulled from the middle. And then with the second one, I pulled from the outside. So they're kind of reversed, which is kind of fun. They're like kind of ended up having this, this chunk in the middle, which I'm happy with. So they look almost matching, but just not quite. I finished these in almost a week. It was like a week and a half and it probably would have been quicker, but I did take a pause from them to work on something else, but they were really, really quick. And I kind of want to make some more shorties because I like wearing these in summer in the mornings because my feet are just always cold. So I like having some shorty socks I can wear around the house, almost like slippers. <laughs> so yeah, really happy with them and want to make some more. We are on to the last finished thing. I know it's a lot of things though. That's a lot of stuff. Two pairs of socks, a sweater, and some dishcloths and stuff. It's quite a few finished things. Ta-da! <laughs> it's so scrunchy. It looks funny. You see if I can hold it up this way. There we go. Maybe a little bit better. <laughs> this is the Sugar Boo Bralette by Kadri, and I knit this out of some Hobie Amigo extra large, I think. It's leftover yarn from a few years ago. I bought some to make a sweater for myself and the sweater wasn't turning out, so I 
for some reason put the sweater unfinished away in a cupboard and then used the leftover balls to make my son a sweater. Well, I came across the sweater the other day or well, a few weeks ago and then ripped it out and then used the yarn to make this. It is a fabulous blue. I love this color. It is really nice. Now, modifications that I made to the pattern, uh, not as many this time. I have done the Sugar Boo bralette a couple of times, but I've turned it into just a plain stockinette tank top. But this time I kept the ribbing. I did change it to two by two, purely because I just prefer the way two by two looks. And then I lengthened it. So it's more like a tank top because I'm not a huge bralette wearing out person. And the last couple of times I've made it, I have done a crochet um, strap, but this time I did the I cord that it asked for. And yeah, I'm very happy with it. It fits very nicely. It is definitely more of a transitional piece. I would not wear this in the middle of summer because it is acrylic and I would probably roast because uh, acrylic and air and white, that's, that's warm. <laughs> but it's nice for like spring and fall to wear under a button up, before flannel or maybe something else, a cardigan. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. It turned out very nice. I knit this one up in maybe like four days, something like that. Last finished thing, yay. Okay, now, now let me show you all the things I've been working on. Here it is, here's the pile. <laughs> Hello there. The first thing I'll show you is probably I'll just show you really quick my longest standing project at the moment and it's kind of my long-term project, but it is my crochet blanket. The last time I showed it, I was down at that stitch marker there. So I've made some decent progress. Let me fold it in a way that I can kind of ish so show the size. Twice as wide as this, so probably my full wingspan. That, that long, tall. So yeah, we are making some progress on this. This is not following any pattern at all, and I am using some mystery acrylic yarn. It's one of these like big giant balls. My, a friend at church, her mother was going into a home, so she went through all of her things and she had this yarn, so she gave me a bunch of the yarn. So I am making a blanket out of it. I still have another ball and, no, I have a part of a ball and like part of a project, something that she started a while ago that I don't know what the heck it is. <laughs> so I will rip that out and use that to finish this. But yeah, I'm very pleased with it. It is turning out very nice. My goal is to maybe finish this in the next couple of months because I would like to start a new long-term project because I'm over this. And I kind of would like to actually have it in my family room to be able to use. Originally, I was actually thinking of putting this in my bedroom, but our cat, lays on our bed a lot and she's black so she doesn't go into the family room much so I figured it's probably better it goes in there so that way it's not this beautiful cream colored blanket getting covered in black cat hair. I did mention at the start of this it was going to be long right? Right? Oh my goodness. Okay let's show you my test knit. I wasn't planning on doing a test knit but you know one popped into my feed and I was like ooh, I want to test that. As you can tell by me grabbing my sock blocker, it is a sock that I am testing. And no, it is not done. But it's at a point where I can stick it on a blocker so I can kind of show you a little bit better. I am test knitting the Day Trip Socks by Rundle Knitting. This pattern is freaking gorgeous. The socks she's made are stunning. She also has a DK version, so if you're not into fingering weight, go check that out. And the pattern itself, like the PDF, so clear, so easy, well laid out, very easy to follow. I, it made my heart so happy to open up this file and just, it was clean and organized. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a wonderful test knit. Haven't hit a single thing. It, it's perfect, it's flawless. At least as far as I can tell, maybe other people are finding things, but um, it looks pretty freaking fabulous to me. But here we are all the strings and all the things flying everywhere. So I am making mine a little bit shorter. I am doing kind of crew height, which I don't do super often. I usually like my legs really long, but I've done this for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I kind of just want a pair that are shorter. I think they'd be super cute with like my um, 
faux Birkenstocks, but oh my goodness, these colors together. Let me tell you about the yarn. Oh my gosh, I'm just getting ahead of myself. So this yarn, the white, is a bear yarn. The caramelly, rusty, beautiful, rich color here and on the heel is by Stress Knits. This was part of her advent in 2021, 22, something like that. I did my very first advent calendar and uh, that's, a, that's a story for another time. Anyways, this yarn is beautiful. I absolutely love this color very, very much. I think it was, I don't remember the name of it, but let's pretend it's called terracotta or something like that. I feel like that's what it was called, but don't quote me on that. And then this fabulous minty, sagey green color is from Bigfoot Yarn Co. And it is a merino cashmere nylon base. I bought this yarn at a show a few years ago and was my first introduction to Bigfoot Yarn Co. And now I just absolutely love her. She is an amazing person. So anyhow, I, I'm a tight knitter, as I've mentioned. Because I'm a tight knitter, doing this slip stitch pattern is creating a very tight leg. I am test knitting the largest size, which is an 80 stitch, uh, count I'm pretty sure I'm not looking at the pattern but yeah it's big I can barely get this over my ankle because I'm just I'm so freaking tight so I decided to make it shorter for that reason because if I made it too long I wouldn't have been able to work that fabric over my like heel I also have a very deep in step so that's also like part of it. So I'm doing the 80 stitch one. This texture will go across the top of the foot and then it'll be stocking it on the bottom and then it will have a white toe. So yeah, I am really, really loving it, but me being a tight knitter, it's not my favorite thing to knit. I will see how it fits. If it fits really good, I will knit the second one. We are required to knit one for the test knit. I would like to knit both because I think it's really pretty, but we'll see how it fits. If it doesn't fit good, I will just take the yarn and knit a plain stockinette pair of socks, but I would like this to hopefully work out because it is beautiful. Uh, yeah, highly recommend this pattern. And yeah, if this is how all of her patterns, are, I'd recommend them all. They're all very beautiful. So yeah, day trip sock test knit. I need to have them done in a week. So I need to get cracking. Uh, it is taking longer because of the slip stitch and like I said, I've had a love slash disinterested like Relationship with my knitting. I've like some days and some weeks I just want to knit all day every day and then there have been some days Where I just don't want to do it. I just don't want to it's not because like I don't want to knit like I want to knit but I just also haven't had the energy to so yeah, I need to get cracking on those socks but let me show you the other things I've been working on. Uh, let's show you this sweater. I'm pretty sure I've shown this a couple of times now. This is the Terrazzo sweater by Petite Knit. And I am knitting this out of Knit Picks High Desert Tweed, which is 100% US um, grown wool. The base is merino and then the little nips are like polyester, polyamide or acrylic. One of the synthetic fibers is the little neppy guys. Uh, the mm, halt reverse the yarn was gifted. Just to be fully transparent, it was gifted to me to try it out and to make a project with. So here I am taking this beautiful gifted yarn and making a project out of it. And I, I know everybody says this like, oh, I'm not paid to like say anything nice about it. Uh, but I, I may tell you, I'm not being told to say nice things about this, but I, mm, it is dreamy. Now, of course, we'll see how it holds up and how I feel about it after the project is finished and stuff. But as of right now, knitting with it, I'm in love. I want to knit all the things out of this yarn. It is beautiful. Um, yeah. Okay. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So far, I'm feeling okay about this. It's a new construction. I want to say contiguous or I don't know, it's like a raglan where you're increasing and at one rate and then you change your increase rate 
and then you change your increase rate again along this like line. I've got three different increase rates. We have one here, one here, and one here. So yeah, it's a different construction. I've never done this type before. Uh, it seems like the fit is okay. I am a, t I'm a tight knitter, so this seam right here is a little bit snug. So we'll see how that blocks out and how that works. But I tried it on and it seems to fit pretty decently, even with it being a bit snug. Uh, modifications, because I can't knit a pattern without making modifications. But I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this modification or not. I don't know. I decided to do long ribbing instead of the normal hem. So the back has extra long two by two ribbing. I did kind of sort of steam it a little bit to get it to chill the heck out because it was doing this like the front is doing <laughs> bunching. I've not steamed the front, but the back I steamed a little bit just to kind of get it to go straight so I could kind of get an idea if I like it or not. I finished the front and as of right now, I'm not sure if I like it. I'm putting sleeves on it and then at that point I will block it and then I'll try it on and see if I like it or not. If I don't, I'll rip it out and then what I want to do is do a, what do you want to call it? Uh, short rows. Lots of short rows in the back to make a nice scoopy butt and then shorter in the front and then I'll do like a thicker ribbing maybe like three inches or so. I don't know. But that's what I'm that's what I'm feeling at the moment. If this chunk chunky long split ribbing hem doesn't work out for me. And I won't be upset if I have to rip it out and do a different body hem on it. I don't mind ripping out my work and redoing stuff. I'm not in any hurry for this sweater. It was not a sweater I intended on making this year at all, so it's not in a hurry. Last night picked up the sleeve and got all this sleeve knitting done just last night and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I feel like I could probably finish the rest of the stockinette sleeve tonight and then maybe start in on the ribbing, which would be nice. It's the ultimate dark moody vibe right now. It's spring, sun is in and the sun is out. I was in a bit of a mood, not gonna lie. Went through a little bit of a phase of uh, just needing comfort knits and new things. So I cast on a new sweater. Not for me though, nope. I cast on a sweater for my youngest who is four. Now the goal is to have this to be something he can wear in fall. So I am knitting it slightly bigger than what he is currently wearing. So I actually had him pull out a sweater that he has of his uh, older brothers and put the two next to each other and were pretty spot on and that one on him is rather large and I just I have smaller kids so I'm hoping he doesn't go through any massive massive girl spurt and <laughs> it's not for him if it doesn't that's fine I can give it to my nephew it is black so it's not like you can really see it but I am knitting this out of some yarn that I found in my stash when I was going through my stash I have a stash video you can go check that out uh, I came across my this Valley Yarns, it's a DK weight. In my head I was thinking it was a, a cotton and wool, but it is actually an acrylic and wool. I don't know why I bought this yarn. It's an odd amount of yarn. It's like something for a summer project, but I don't know why I would have bought in wool acrylic for a summer garment. So I decided I'll just throw it in a sweater for my kiddo. Now I'm not sure I'm going to have enough to finish the sleeves. I am going to start the body ribbing here in a minute uh, and I don't know I might lengthen it a little bit longer just to make sure we have plenty of length because he has a long torso so I might do a little bit more on the body but I'm not sure I'm going to have enough length for the sleeves so I'm going to weigh my ball ahead of time, go about halfway through the ball on one sleeve so I have the other on the other side and then I will end the sleeves in this gray so it'll have like color blocked sleeves I'm anticipating I should be able to get it to about here like a little past the elbow and then start the gray and I think that will look actually kind of cool and fun so yeah that's the plan I'm not really following a pattern I used Tin Can Knits, the free sweater pattern. 
the raglan that has the garter stitch on the sleeves. You know which one I'm talking about. Uh, it'll be in the description box listed with the kid's sweater. Um, but yeah, I'm using that pattern cast on amount, I, but it's DK. The pattern uses worsted, I'm using DK, and I was okay with using that cast on though because the pattern itself has kind of a wide neckline and I knew since I was using, using a lighter yarn, it would be smaller, so it seems to be the perfect neckline. Um, and then I didn't really follow the pattern from there, I just kind of increased until it hit the width that I wanted. And yeah, so far so good, we'll see if it actually ends up working out or not. Last project. All my projects are kind of live in this basket. Majority of this basket is my yarn for my crochet top. The other part of it is living in my Black Pearl Magic bag, which I love so very, very much. It's like this really cool vinyl. Listen. It's not such a nice sound. I love that sound for some reason. And then the zipper. <laughs> such a clean zipper sound. Uh, mm. Anyways, uh, the project I am making is the Limonata Top, and I can never remember the designer name, but it is part of the Pom Pom magazine. I have the, I actually have it here, look at this. I have the crochet issue that has a bunch of crochet patterns in it. Look at this top. Oh, look at how freaking pretty this is. I can actually, I guess, tell you who the designer is by Anna D. That's who the designer is. So yeah, I am very much in love with this top and I cannot wait to wear this. I am doing some modifications. I will tell you about in a second, but let me show you how far I am so far. Check it out. It's looking a little bit like something. I'm so excited. Look at these little wheels. Aren't they so cute? Okay, so I am using this Paintbox DK. This is pistachio green. I love this color very much. I actually made a baby blanket for my youngest out of this exact yarn. And yeah, I was actually going to make a blanket um, for another baby, but then that didn't happen. So I've had this yarn just kind of hanging out and I decided I'm going to make myself something out of this yarn. I do you have a bunch more circles crocheted up? I've got this stack, which has got its ends woven in, and then this stack that does not have its ends woven in. But, okay, modification. The pattern, because <laughs> I'm really bad at following patterns, I realized I was supposed to be crocheting these uh, circles together as I go. I was just crocheting up a bunch of circles and being like, look at all these circles I've made. <laughs> And I'm such a dork, I should have been crocheting them together as I go. So I was like, well, poop. I think I had like 16 circles crocheted and was kind of like, okay, well, let's stop doing that and let's go ahead and join as we go. Well, I did that for the first round. I am not a fan of the look of the uh, crochet as you go. So let me show you. This is the join. I'm getting there. And I tried a bunch of different methods and I just wasn't liking the look of any of them. So I have actually changed and I am seaming them together, which I hate seaming. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but I prefer the look so much more. So I'm seaming them all together by hand. And that's fine because the look is way better than this little ridge thing that I was getting. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, so I will be joining all of these little motifs together by hand. And it's actually not that bad, to be honest. I just make one long string and I just kind of go around, join a little section, kind of sneak my yarn through the motif so you can't see it, and then join a little section, sneak my yarn through, join a little section, uh, and it's working out just fine. And yeah, like I said, I'm liking the look of it. I feel like it is smoother and cleaner than these joins, right? So much cleaner. So I'm finding that the bottom is a little different and I probably will be 
crocheting a border around the bottom just to like clean it up and make it look a little bit nicer as well because my the join added a little bit of width so it is kind of a little wider at the bottom than the following row which again is okay because it's at the bottom so if it comes out a little bit it's okay but if I do a crochet border I feel like that'll just kind of make it a little bit cleaner and nicer so yeah I have there's supposed to be three rounds for the body and then you start in on the sleeve or the like bust portion of it but I think I'm going to add a fourth row just to make it a little bit longer my idea is to have I have like a sports bralette that is very similar color to this. So wearing that with either my high-waisted yoga pants or my high-waisted jeans. So that way there's only like this much like skin showing like ish, but then this is over it, but I want this to fully cover over it. So I'm thinking four rounds is going to be the way to go. Whew, I feel like I've been speed talking again. If I miss anything, ask me questions in the comments. I do also have my Bigfoot that I was working on. I have put him on pause because I am actually, actually made a decent way into his body, pretty close to being near finish, and it's too big. <laughs> my gauge is off, but I can't check my gauge because it's furry fluffy yarn, so I, it's fine. The body needs to be frogged. I'm gonna start over and make the body smaller, and it's gonna be great. I just need to rip it out. I just haven't had the get up and go to do that but it will happen because my kids keep asking me about Bigfoot and when I will finish Bigfoot and he will get done eventually but just not right now I do have some spinning but I think I'll save that for next time just because I've got so much in this like video already I do have some new yarn to show I have Recently gone to a pop-up at La Mercerie. Uh, Explorer Knits was there. I am a little sad because Rushma of Hello Lavender is going to be there on the 27th of April. And I will not be able to go because I have my nephews that weekend. I am going to be watching them while my brother brother-in-law and sister are out of town and also the next day is my kiddo's birthday party so I'll be prepping for that so sadly I'm gonna miss that pop-up um, but I did go to the Explorer Knits one and I got a little bit of yarn I bought this one from Explorer Knits this is Rain Shadow and it's on the Rockies DK base. And the plan is to make a hat. I actually pulled out another yarn that I want to use with it. I'm thinking like a Musselboro hat. I don't know if I'm gonna use that exact pattern or something similar, but the plan is to have one side be all of this and then the other side, this color. I don't remember the yarn dyer <laughs> um, or the yarn or anything, but I know it's like a similar base. Uh, so, and the colors are pretty close to each other. So I figured the hat on one side could be this, and then maybe the brim in this, and then the other side fully this. But because I chopped my hair short again, doesn't it look so fun? Uh, I wear more hats with my hair short. So I want to add some more hats. So this is really nice with my eyes and my complexion. But I think this yarn is gonna be great. So I'm very happy with this yarn that I got from Explorer. The other yarn I got was Craft Me Not Yarn Co. This stunning tomato red. It is, whoa, it is seriously popping on screen. It's not quite that bright. But when I put it up here, it of course gets closer to my window, which makes it brighter. But this is the color Atlas, and this is her sock base, which is uh, an 80-20 merino nylon. Uh, <laughs> I don't have an exact plan for this, but I've wanted to yarn this color for a while. I think it's probably a bit too much for my head. I mean, maybe. I don't know. But I wanted some for heels, toes, and cuffs. It may sound silly to buy a whole hank of yarn for heels, toes, and cuffs, but I really like red as like an accent pop thing. So I'm thinking this, maybe also for this. 
I don't know, it's kind of fun. So yeah, this. I love this colorway so very much. It is very pretty. I am very happy to give um, Craft Me Nuts yarn coat a try. Okay, the next yarn I had to show you was a gift slash trade. I recently did a collaboration with Golden Hour Knitwear and she did a Princess Diaries collection of yarn, which may still be live as a pre-order. Don't quote me on that, but go check it out just in case. Go follow her, she's got beautiful yarn. Uh, but she did a Princess Diaries collection, which I also participated in and made some stitch markers for. But I sent her stitch markers and she sent me yarn. She did send me more than what we had agreed on, which is really sweet. Um, let me show you first the fiber she sent me. Uh, this is two different colors in here. I don't remember the name of this one. This one is You Are a Princess. So this beautiful little blushy neutral pink, which is really nice. And then this sock set, which is really fun, is You Have Pears in Your Flowers. So like this is the pink of the flowers and then we've got pears hanging out in the flowers. <laughs> uh, I love the Princess Diaries movies. So yeah, I was very excited to participate. But this is the color I'm very excited about and this is, uh, I can't wait to cast on with this yarn. This is a cotton merino base. It is 50% merino, 50% pima cotton. It's a fingering base. It has 437 yards. It's a four ply and this is the color you can call me Joe. I love it so much. And I'm thinking of doing the Tonight Top by Lily Kate France out of this. I have made a Tonight Top before, but I made modifications to make it negative ease, but I think I'm gonna do it just as the pattern says with some positive ease and this really relaxed high neck tank in this black. It's gonna be amazing. I cannot wait. My goal is to finish this sweater finish the sweater, um, and cast this on. It's my hope anyways. We'll see if this happens. I have all the plans, but you know. Okay, do we do art next or do I show you my stitch markers that are coming? Let me show you my art. I don't have a ton of art. I have just, it's been a hit and a miss. I've been doing a lot of art for work and like painting things that will be for sale. So let me show you some of the mini paintings I've been doing that will like go with me to markets and maybe eventually I'll put online. I don't know. They're kind of a pain to put online if I'm being completely honest. I'm just gonna give you a small sampling because there are a lot of them. Here we've got a, cl a little collection. We've got a little sheepy and some tree, some like fence scene. And then this little one is super cute. It's got little itty bitty sheepies in it. These are two and a half by three inches. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty positive. Uh, we've got like this pretty landscape and then uh, an ocean one, which is, I've never done anything like this before. So I think it is super fun. We have a dark moody landscape, a pretty birch forest with wildflowers and some sunflowers and a vase. Um, the One of the things I've been working on is uh, some fabric for my son's leg. So my son has a prosthesis for his foot and it happens to come up his leg to hold said foot on. He was born with a growth disorder, had to have it amputated when he was one, and now every year he gets a new leg because kids grow and they need new legs like all the time. He has always picked a Star Wars fabric to go on his legs. They basically like make a fabric like cover for it and then they pour like this almost like a resin type thing over the top of it to protect it. But he's always done Star Wars fabric. This year he wanted Cal Kestis, which if you're at all nerdy, um, Cal Kestis is a character from the Star Wars video game. I don't remember the name of the video game, but it is from a video game. Uh, but he wanted this character and I was like, I can't find this fabric with that character anywhere. It does not exist. So I decided I'd make my own. So I have the individual elements, but here's the first element. This is the character Cal Kestis. Uh, he's got this lightsaber and then there's a little droid on his shoulder. 
because that's where the little droid like sits. It's really cute. Let me show you the up close of just the droid. Here you are. This is BD-1, which is also the name of our betta fish. Uh, I guess we're a little bit nerdy. It's fine. Uh, but here's the fabric-ish as of right now. I do have to do some tweaking to get the repeat right. I've got the repeat wrong at the moment, so it's not quite working up when I want to order the fabric. So I need to do some YouTube watching and tweaking and get that sorted. But here is sort of what it will look like. Uh, it's got the little droid and the main character and then like the Star Wars rebel symbol and then the ship and little stars and whatnot. So yeah, I spent a lot of time working on this uh, and then still need to <laughs> go back and fix it and work on it a little bit more because yeah, it's not the best in the world. Uh, I've been doing some more human studies. I do have some more in my sketchbook, but I don't have my sketchbook with me, so just take my word for it. And then, well, this is kind of like also like more a life thing, but um, I have been listening to the books, uh, the Wheel of Time series. I am loving it so very, very much. I am just finished, I've just finished the third book. I'm currently waiting on the fourth book from the library, but it's it's taking a minute. And I'm maybe having a little bit of withdrawals from the book series, it's fine. But to quench those withdrawals, my husband and I have started the show series, The Wheel of Time on Amazon. It's so bad, it's so bad. My, now, no, it's just bad. <laughs> I keep thinking like there's redeeming qualities. No, not really. There's so many things. But anyways, the first episode was like, had like so much of the first book crammed into one episode. I was like, this is like a third of the book. Like maybe a quarter, quarter of the book slammed into one episode and it's a 30 hour book. That's insane. Uh, but anyways, uh, as I was watching it, I was like, no, they should have done this and they should have done that. So I drew up my own little concept art of like the, like where I think they should have kind of started things out. So yeah, I did a digital drawing of that. It's probably really hard to see. If I remember, I'll pop it like actually on screen digitally. But yeah, it's, I won't go all nerdy on you. I won't. <laughs> Let me show you stitch markers, shall I? Okay, so I have a collection that is going to be going live on April 26th. It is a Friday. My collections tend to go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time. So mark your calendars now. Uh, subscribe to my newsletter to get actual updates just in case something happens because let's, let's face it, life happens sometimes. Sorry, I'm trying to organize these uh, while I'm talking. Uh, but yeah. That's the plan as of right now, so keep your eyes open for that. But let me go ahead and show these to you. All right, so showing in my hands was not working out, so I'm just gonna show an overview like this. I have them laying on my planning page, but um, you will see some of them have changed a little bit from their plans. But here we have the first set, which is the coffee shape. Uh, this set actually I've done before, but I've changed it up a little bit. So it's now just colors. So we have a very dark chocolatey brown, a cream and black. This one is a little fern inside of the sheep. And then we have a nice red, green and bright orange for the accent markers. Um, we'll come over here. We've got this little guy who has a mushroom in him. Um, and then we have a brown, orange and white accent. A lot of these are a little bit funkier and a little different because I wanted to play with unique color palettes and not something you see every day. Uh, so here we have a hot pink one with the turquoise, the like periwinkle and red. Then we have this neon yellow with periwinkle pink and blue. Really love this set. Um, and then we have one of my favorites, probably my second favorite one which is just a nice creamy white one that has this peach and then these like bluish grays. And then 
This is another bold, funky, fun one. We've got the mustard yellow with the blue, red, and pink. Super unique and fun. And then this one's my favorite. It has the peachy color with the orange, dark green, and lavender. I just, I love that one so much. It's definitely my favorite. So this is a color palette collection. Uh, it's definitely a little bit different in the color palettes. Just, like I said, I wanted something a little unique and different for them. But anyways, yeah, there's all the markers. That's a very long video of all the different things. Um, I'm just going to end it there because otherwise I will ramble on forever and ever because I am lacking human interaction and I feel very chatty and want to just chat about all the things. So I'll just stop there before I run this into a two hour long video because that's too much. That's too much. Nobody wants to watch that. But if you've made it to the end, thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, and if you've made it to the end, you probably are already subscribed. But if you're not, hit the like and subscribe, you know, down below. Uh, and then leave any comments with any questions you have or if there's things that you're working on, let me know what you've been working on lately. So yeah, have a beautiful and fabulous rest of your day. Bye.